a group of physicists just proved that a theory of everything doesn't exist. They say it's mathematically impossible. If they're right, then a lot of physicists will have to rethink the purpose of their existence. In this recent paper that I believe to be formally correct, the authors, which include Lawrence Krauss, looked at the prospects of a theory of everything that's also a final theory. I swear it's a coincidence that I talked about this in a recent video just a day after the paper appeared. Then again, I don't believe in coincidence, so maybe the universe is trying to tell us something. Be that as it may, in the paper they look at a theory of everything that combines all the known fundamental forces and explains all phenomena, at least in principle. Notably, such a theory must tell us how to consistently combine the quantum field theories of the standard model with Einstein's general relativity, which is not a quantum theory. It should explain dark matter and dark energy, and besides this, physicists also think that this theory would be the complete ultimate description of nature with nothing more to be found. As Steven Weinberg put it, it'd be the final theory. The authors of the new paper have three arguments for why such a final theory is unachievable. The first is Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. This tells us that if the axiomatic system of the theory is consistent, there will always be two statements that can't be proved true. This means that a theory of everything couldn't really answer all your questions about everything. Okay, this isn't the most original argument, but I guess they had to say it. The remaining argument in the paper is, for all I can tell, new. They use two other impossibility theorems from mathematics. Tarski's indefinability theorem, which says that within such a putatively final theory, it'd be impossible to generally define what you even mean by true. Does the wave function truly collapse? Who knows? So then, is your theory really about everything? And then they use Chaitin's argument about algorithmic complexity, which says that this final theory would inevitably have a complexity threshold beyond which no further statements could be proved. That's awkward if you have a hugely complex system like the example they name in the paper is the inside of a black hole. If that exceeds the complexity bound, then, well, your theory of everything can't tell you what's going on, so it doesn't and explain everything. What are we to make of this? Should physicists who work on a theory of everything take their hats and eat the chalk? I think that, as interesting as all these impossibility theorems are, I doubt they matter much in practice. Take the first argument about Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Physicists rarely try to actually prove that a system of axioms is fully consistent. If you take any of the approaches to a theory of everything, none of them even have an agreed-upon set of axioms. No one even ever proved that string theory actually solves the problem of infinities in quantum gravity. They just believe it does. And so, what if there's a true statement that can't be proved true if that statement isn't about anything measurable? There are a lot of things in theories that you can try to prove that have zero practical relevance. For example, there are hundreds of different solutions to Einstein's field equations. But most of them don't describe anything that actually exists. And who cares if a solution that doesn't describe a physically real situation has a property you can't prove? Then there's the second argument, that it's impossible to generally define truth. That's got to be a killer argument on Twitter. But in physics, we don't need a general definition of truth. We just need results of specific computations that we then test against observations. That's the notion of truth that we care about in physics. Does it actually describe what we see? If yes, publish. If no, call it beyond the standard model and publish anyway. And about the third argument, we can only ever observe a finite amount of information. So it's well possible that the complexity bound of a theory of everything is just above what we need in reality. That said, I think this is an important paper despite my misgivings about it, because I believe that physicists need to think more about what's logically possible and necessary. 
However, physics isn't maths. We shouldn't forget that maths, after all, is just a means to an end, and the end is to describe our observations. If you want to know more about what Gödel's theorems are about, I suggest you check out Kurt's recent video, which is really good. If you don't understand it, congratulations, you're now qualified to publish in theoretical physics. Basically, I think the final theory will be about as final as my paper draft. There's final one and then there's final two. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and how to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their newly updated maths courses. No matter how abstract the topic seems, Brilliant's courses have intuitive visualizations that really click into my brain. And Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good? I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.